Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today we're going to be doing a piece that's inspired by Tracy Scott from Paper Artsy, but um, it's looking at sort of the colour wheel. So this is a page, a use it up page in my large dilutions journal and it was a whole heap of leftover um, paints and I decided that I want to do something interesting with it. Now if I have a page like this in my journal, one of the things I like to do is to add some texture to it and some layers and I do that using stencils and a lot of people sort of ask me how do you know what colours to use and in cases like this I use my colour wheel theory or my colour theory to sort of work it out. On the right hand side you can see I've got a lot of greens, blues and purples. They're all analogous colours, they all sit together on the colour wheel, they're all cool colours. So they go together. I know I can use them together and they're not going to make brown and they're going to blend together no matter what I do. Purple is a, a slightly tricky colour however because you need to make sure you've got the right shade of purple. Um, if you're using um, cool colours you need to make sure your purple has a blue tone to it. Um, if you're using warm colours you need to make sure the purple has a red tone to it. So um, sometimes purple can be a little bit tricky and if you're not sure sometimes it's best to leave purple out. So all I'm doing is just overlapping stencils using those analogous colours. So using colours that I've used in the background already and just repeating them. Um, repeating the colours and repeating the shapes over the page tends to give it a lot of unity. Now I've got the black on that side too because that's a sort of a neutral colour, it doesn't matter what I'm putting over the top of that, um, just to make it pop. I'm also putting, it looks like white but this is actually, um, it's a duck egg tone, one of the paper art sea paints. So it gives that beautiful brightness to the page without um, taking away from the colours in the background. You can sort of see from that colours in the background it's sort of all blended together. Um, <clears throat> I could have, and you have seen me in the past, um, mix up lots and lots of different colours in the layer <clears throat> um, and you can get away with that with acrylic paint because if you dry between the layers it will layer rather than mix the colours. But if you're not 100% sure what to do I would always recommend staying within sort of the analogous colours, colours next to each other in the, the colour wheel or warm colours and cool colours is a good way to remember it. So I'm putting in some stamping into the background as well just to add a bit of interest and again I'm staying with the same colours I've used in the background so I'm staying with the blues, the purples and the greens and I've got a little bit of white there because I didn't have a lighter um, cool colour but again like with the black it just gives a bit of pop on the page. So I'm now going in with some stamping, some black, just to bring it over from the other side or the left hand side of the page and sort of again make sense of that black being there. And it's um, just, um, these are scribbly stamps. The stamps that I'm using are all by Tracy Scott as well. I, when I went to her class I did go a little bit nuts with her stencils and her stamps. Um, I really love these scribbly stamps because they're just... Um, so fine but they do add that little bit of detail onto the page. Finally because I wanted to bring a little bit more of the green back in I'm going back in with a green stamped image over the top. Now you'll notice I've left a sort of figurey shape on one side. That wasn't intentional when I was first doing this page. Um, I just didn't have enough black to fill up that, that space. But as I was doing this I thought oh, I could put a figure in there and have a, a space for a quote on the other page. So that's what I chose to do. So <clears throat> I just roughly drew out the shape of the figure I wanted um, put in sort of an overly head and an oval body. So something really, really simple. I wasn't going to put too much detail into this. I just wanted the shape. And I've painted it out using um, a peachy coloured paint just to block out the background. But you will notice I did use an archival ink in the background. An archival ink is an oil-based ink. And it does something um, funny with acrylic paints and it can sort of float, the colour can float to the top. I personally don't mind that. Um, I like having some of the background peeping through. But for some people that really may bother you. So you may want to sort of paint out your figure first and mask it off when you're stamping so you don't have that um, image coming through. Or experiment with some other inks and see what would happen. So I've just very carefully drawn in 
my I roughly mapped out my face where all my features are going to go and then I decided I wanted to paint the body in white because I wanted um, to do this contrast and I decided that because I had all the cool colors in the background I wanted the figure to be warm colors and the reason for that is obviously if you do the contrast it's going to really pop out of the page it's going to look like it's in the foreground because there's such a difference between it now to do this figure I have um, sped this up incredibly fast um, so <laughs> I do apologize for my manic looking hand, but otherwise you would be here for hours watching me do this. This um, is just painting in the face and shading the face. Now I'm, you know, I'm not going to give you too much <laughs> information on it because um, a lot of this stuff is um, from Tracy's class. I'm not going to reteach her class for her because she's amazing at doing her job and I, I'm just doing it second hand. But if you ever do get the opportunity to um, go to one of her classes, it is really worthwhile. I know I feel 200% more confident drawing faces and particularly drawing eyes and mouths um, after doing her class than I ever have before. So I'm using Prismacolor pencils and Paper Artsy paint. Now I have used some other colour pencils in the past and I've used um, other acrylic paints. What I will say is the Paper Artsy paints are a chalk based finish so they're extremely matte and they um, allow colour pencil to sit over it beautifully. Um, you can get really fine shading and you can spread your colour out a long way and blend your colour really easily using those paints. Sometimes when I've used my favourite Dina Wakely paints I found it's a bit plasticky and the colour pencil won't sit over the top so this actually gives it a lot of tooth. Now you, if you didn't have those paints or you didn't have a really matte paint I haven't tried this but possibly if you painted over your figure with maybe a clear um, gesso that might give you enough tooth for the colour pencil to go over the top but um, that's something for you to experiment with. I haven't done that yet. I'm, I might try it one day, but now I've got these paper artsy paints, I don't really need to. So once I finished shading in my face, I decided that I was going to do the hair and just do something really, really simple. And you all know I love my neons. So <laughs> I started to paint in with the neon colours. I did mix it with a bit of white just to give it a little bit more opac opacity because um, as you've heard me say before, uh, neon, neon paints are very, very translucent. So just to give enough coverage to go over the top of that really highly patterned background, I wanted to put in um, a little bit of white. You can see I sort of painted over the top again with more of the neon to bring back that bright color. So because I had so many stencils in the background, I actually want to put some stencils in my figure as well and on the dress. Now to be honest with this one, while I love the effect of this, um, I don't, well, it would have been much easier for me to paint the background. I wanted to have the background a purpley colour before I stenciled. However, I don't think I would have got those beautiful colours of the reds and golds if I had done that. So. Um, this is my alternative was to go in with a fine brush and paint around it. Now in the final piece it actually doesn't look too bad. When I was doing it I thought oh no I've ruined it because you could actually see the paint strokes of um, where I was putting the paint and I really didn't like that effect because particularly because I'd stenciled it the paint had gone on so smooth with the other application that by now going in with the paint um, with a brush it, it just had a different bit of a texture um, but it worked in the end so perhaps putting the purple down first and stencing over it you could possibly actually just figured out my own problem if you painted it purple first then stenciled over in white and let that dry don't move your stencil and then stenciled over the top with the color that would work so if you don't want to do what I've just done <laughs> I've just solved the problem for you. Um, so that's what I've done. But I really like the contrast of that purple then, um, oh, sorry, the, the figure standing out from the cool background. I'm also going in with a white paint pen just to really pop out those reds and golds from the, the background of the figure. And you'll notice um, 
well hopefully you can notice, that the purple that I used in the figure has got a red base to it. It's a much warmer colour than the purple I've used in the background. So um, it, it's, it, it is a hard thing to pick, particularly when you're in the shop looking at all the different ranges. Um, but for most other colours it doesn't really matter because they sit firmly in the warm cool camp. But purple is just on the border of both colours so it can sometimes be a little bit tricky. To hide the paint lines that I had, I decided I'd go in and just get really dotty with my white paint pen and put some patterns in. I think that really helped sort of tie it all together and make it look sort of deliberate like it was supposed to be there. Now I'm just going in and putting some um, lines in to sort of divide up my hair. I did have some issues when I was doing this because I'd used the neon paint, which is Again, a translucent paint, but it's also a little bit more plasticky. It's not matte like the other paints. So you'll notice in some areas I've actually scrubbed off some of the paint um, in the hair, um, which was really annoying me. And I sort of didn't go as hard on the hair with the shading as I really wanted to. So I, I kind of just sort of left it. You'll also notice around her body, there's a little bit of white space, which I didn't um, mind having there. I could have gone in and made her hair longer and more flowy to cover that in um, but in the end it didn't really bother me all that much. So the final thing I wanted to do was to put in my quote and I found this one on Pinterest which says forever the girl that gets excited when the sky is full of colour which I thought um, was really appropriate for this page and I am that girl. I love going out and seeing the, the different sunrises sunsets. I'm never usually up for the sunrises or I try to avoid to be up for the sunrises but definitely the sunsets and the stormy skies are, are my favourites. So this um, page I, I quote I really loved. You'll also notice on the quote um, where I've coloured over with the white pen over the archival ink it's changed its colour. So again just be aware I could put a few coats of paint pen over the top of that to cover it but in the end I'm talking about the sky full of colour so I don't really mind that it has coloured it. I'm just going in finally with a um, black pen and putting a little bit of a shadow around my letters just to pop them out from the background. And that's it. This page took me a lot longer than it usually does when I'm creating. Um, most because it's taking time with the shading on the face and doing the eyes and all that sort of stuff. But it was lots of fun to do and I thought it was a great way to sort of use up the background. So I hope you enjoyed this and learned a little bit about colour theory and until next time, bye for now.